Hello guys and welcome back. Today I want to give you my unboxing experience and my general thoughts of the Zealous Hammerhead 3 Burnt Orange. I ordered this watch around one month ago and to be honest I wasn't really that excited when Zelos initially released the new slimmed down hammerhead line. But because the weather is getting warmer here in Vienna and I was craving for a fun summer watch, I decided to treat myself that sweet sweet orange dial. I was kinda lucky to grab one of these because little did I know this color variant sold out in under 5 minutes. I actually might have been one of the last people to grab theirs. I just casually logged on, ordered and paid for the hammerhead and when I refreshed the page it was already gone. But for those of you guys who are still looking to get this particular model, I think Sirius Watches will launch their uh, badge soon, so go ahead and check their website, I will leave a link in the description down below. Fast forward 4 weeks and I am greeted by the very friendly DHL guy who gave me my package. I did have to pay 77 euro in duties and taxes, so this watch cost me 380 euro in total, which is an equivalent of 465 US dollars or 330 pounds. Despite that, I still think that this is an incredible value for money proposition by Zelos. The amount of watch you get is outrageous. In comparison, a Seiko 5 costs around the same here in Austria and the Zelos easily beats the Seiko out of the water. But uh, this watch isn't perfect, uh, there are some things that I wish they did differently, but let's not get ahead of ourselves and check out the packaging first. The last time I ordered a Zelos watch, they came in a very different box and casing. As far as I know, every watch comes now with this brown PU leather case. Elshan mentioned once that they didn't want to spend a ton of money on packaging and extras but instead focus on a better quality of product, which I am totally fine with. Most Zelos boxes and leather rolls from past orders are just lying around in my closet anyway, so I would rather have these resources spent to get a better watch than a nice wooden box. And once unwrapped we can take a closer look on this beauty and remember when I said that I wasn't that hyped when this watch was released? Well, uh, once I held this watch in my hand the hype was real. Let's just take a second here and appreciate that sunburst orange dial. Even my wife likes it and she hates like 90% of the watches that I show her. So let's check out the measurements and the dimensions. This watch is a tricky one. It doesn't wear as big as I was expecting. Don't get me wrong, it's still a big chunk of steel on your wrist, but I feel like the Swordfish 42mm wears kind of bigger than that. In fact, I feel like the Hammerhead 3 wears more like a Seiko Turtle. The diameter of the bezel alone is just 40 mm. The case diameter is 44 mm. The lock to lock distance with the protruding end links is 53, which makes it quite long, but the way the locks are designed makes it wear very nicely on the wrist. The case height is one of the biggest changes to the previous model, where the Hammerhead 2 was 17 mm thick, this one comes in at 14, 14.5 ish. If you measure the case alone without the domed sapphire crystal, it's closer to 13 mm. And that's a huge improvement in my opinion. That was exactly the reason why I didn't buy the Hammerhead 2, because the 17 mm were just too much, even though I love the design of it. Lastly, the lock opening is 22 mm in case you want to swap out the bracelet, which I believe many people will do. Not because it's a bad bracelet, uh, it's quite the opposite actually, it's one of the best bracelets that I ever handled. No, I am talking about the weight. This is a hefty watch and it comes around 207 grams. I don't mind that at all, but some folks might. Let's take a closer look at the case. It is entirely brushed and has actually two kinds of brushing on the side of the case. 
Here is also where the name hammerhead comes from, because the side of the case looks like the head of a hammerhead shark. The crown is positioned at the 4 o'clock position and features a loom Celos logo, which is the coolest shit ever. You might think that the crown is too big and that it will dig into your wrist, but that's thankfully not the case at all. The finishing on the bracelet and the clasp is just fantastic, there are no sharp edges whatsoever. The clasp fits the overall watch very well and it also has a quick adjust system. I think this is the best Zelos clasp that they did so far. It's not too big, it's not too small and it feels like it's an integrated design, which is always a plus. Of course we also have solid end links and solid links that are secured with tiny screws. Another new feature of the hammerhead is the fact that the bracelet now tapers down to 20 mm, which I like a lot. The case bag is very nice as well, giving this watch a 300 meter of water resistance. We can see two hammerhead sharks swimming at the bottom of the ocean. There are also no rough edges either, so it's always good to see that Zelos is listening to customer feedback. We also have the specs written on the outer ring along with the individual number of each watch. Mine is the number 188 out of 300. Let's get back to the front of the watch. The bezel is very nicely finished as well, however I feel like it's a little bit rougher than the rest of the watch. I believe the reason for that is so that you can grip it and turn the bezel more easily. The bezel action is very solid, However, I feel like the bezel is a little bit too hard to turn. I personally prefer a smooth bezel action like the one that they have on the Mako. This one, however, I, right now I don't feel like I really want to turn and mess around with the bezel that much. It's not a big deal for some people, but um, for me, a satisfying bezel action is kind of important. Uh, the good thing is that there is no backplay at all and the brushed ceramic bezel insert is really nicely done too. There's also a ton of loom as well, but more on that later. Protecting the dial is a very nicely double-domed sapphire crystal with colorless AR coating. I think they hit the nail on the head with this one. The crystal looks so good that I'm glad they didn't go for blue AR coating, as most brands nowadays do, because it's the cheaper option. And with that, let's check out the fantastic dial. We have a white chapter ring here and a date complication at the 6 o'clock position with a black date wheel, which fits the watch very well. The Lumzelos logo. Yes, you heard correctly, Loomed Zelos logo is applied at the 12 o'clock position and the words hammerhead and 300 meters, 1000 feet are printed above the date window. I kinda wish that Zelos would have chose a different color for the hammerhead font, but that's nitpicking. The broad hands and the big indices have a thick black outer edge and are rather simple in comparison with the previous hammerhead model. The reason for that is a simple one, more loom. And as if Zelos wasn't top tier in the loom department already, they decided to raise the bar even higher and go crazy on this model. I don't think there's another Zelos that glows so strongly when it gets dark. Even if you just go from a well lit area to a slightly darker one, the loom kicks in immediately. Seriously, check this one out. Inside this watch beats the very reliable Seiko NH35 movement. Some people don't like the NH35, but I don't have a problem with that. Mine is very accurate and runs at around plus 5 seconds a day. Most affordable Zelos watches like the Swordfish 40mm or this hammerhead tend to sell out very fast due to the lower pricing. And the premium movement means that the watch is going to be more expensive and not many people are willing to pay 100 or 150 bucks more for a better movement. Well, as you probably already know, I'm quite blown away by this watch. I didn't expect it to like it as much as I do. 
Since I got it, it didn't leave my wrist at all. And I'm actually thinking about picking up a different color variant, that's how impressed I am. But as mentioned before, there are some things that I wish for in the next Hammerhead 3.5 run. I wish that Zelos would have included a good quality rubber strap or some kind of other accessory just like they did in the past. I think it would round up the package even more. The bezel action is just not my favorite, I have to admit. It's just too hard to turn and as someone who plays with the bezel a lot during the day, I'm a bit disappointed. And the last point that I have to address is the shipping time. I don't have a problem with it, to be honest. After all, I waited almost 6 months for the Helm Komodo, but a lot of people got quite upset because the watches took around 4 weeks to ship. Although Elshan made it perfectly clear that some of these are still in the production when they released the watches. I would still prefer Zelos to sell the watches when they are closer to being finished. This way consumers like us don't have to wait 4 or 5 or 6 weeks to receive the watch. Rather, uh, maybe make it 2 weeks or 3 weeks. But other than these 3 points, everything is perfect. The orange dial is something that I haven't seen before, the loom is just outrageously strong, the bracelet is beautifully machined and the clasp features a quick adjust system. At this price point, there's nothing that beats this watch, in my opinion. But what do you guys think? Leave a comment down below and let me know. Thanks for watching and I'm going to see you on the next one. Cheers!